it's not like this career is not for the faint of heart. Like it is stressful and it can be a lot of pressure. So I think yoga and just focusing, honestly, just like being mindful and focusing on your breathing has helped me. I can't even tell you how many times, so many times to just like come back to the breath and to relax. Welcome everyone to the Closing Table Podcast, real accounts from real estate professionals from across the country brought to you by Windowsill. I'm your host, Kat Schooler, and I am so excited to be here today with Adriana <laughs> Vasquez of Century yes. 21 Metro Brokers uh, operating in the mid to southeast Michigan area. Adriana, how you doing? Good. How are you? You nailed my last name. Thank you. I was, I was so nervous. I was. I almost <laughs> yeah, asked you, you one more good. time how to say it, but I was like, no, I can do this. So yes, yes, I it. can. I can sleep well tonight. <laughs> yes. So um, you are a real estate agent in the uh, southeast Michigan, mid Michigan area. Tell us how you got started. Um. Well, I guess I never like real estate wasn't like yes, this is exactly what I want to do. I had a friend who worked for MI Homes um, in Northville in new construction. And she knew like I had just had my baby and I was trying to like get back on my feet, figure out what it is I really wanted to do. Um, and she had introduced me to an agent, Rakesh at uh, Remax Dream Properties in Northville. And he helped me get my license. So I was kind of like his little assistant, helped him. He showed me the MLS documents, like how things work. Um, really taught me a lot, helped me, put me through class, helped me get licensed. And that's where I learned a lot, a lot. So like the first like year or so I was over there. Um, and then I moved back home to Flushing and jumped over with my cousin who is at Century 21 Metro Brokers as well. And I've been there since. Oh, that's so cool. It must be fun to, to work with someone you're so close to. Yeah. Yeah. It's nice. It's nice. We have a uh, quite a few realtors in our family. So. Oh, so so you. Kind it's of good. Or it's super competitive. It. Oh. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, but we're good. That is funny though, because you kind of have a similar like sphere of influence, right? It is. I mean, we all have different different people. That's for sure. Um, but you never know. I think we have a couple family members that like went to different agents, and I think to make the assumption that they didn't want to like step on toes and choose mm. um but yeah no issue that's, so far that's kind of funny um yeah. so that must be really cool though to have so many people in your life you know to go to and and ask questions do you find you are relying on you know these other agents in your life for mentorship or are you relying more like on your broker is it just kind of like a little bit of everything it's a little bit of everything especially in the beginning because this is technically my third year so I've been licensed for longer but I've only been active for the last three um and it's a little bit of everyone especially in the beginning I there's a few people that I don't know and I wouldn't be where I am now without them they like have quite literally held my hand through everything or like if I call in a panic like hey what do I do or like because they teach you they don't teach you this like stuff in when you take the class like they don't teach you how to write a contract or what do you do when someone wants to write an offer you know so um, there are a few people in my life that I that I lean on and newer people now too that I really they just inspire me to do better that's so cool to have those people in your life. Yeah. Yeah, we're lucky. lucky. So along the same lines, what are what are some lessons you've learned in your three years being active? Like maybe something that if you were to start over again today, you would have done right away. Uh, something I would have done right away. I think I would have gotten a coach or someone like right off the bat um, that I could rely on like very heavily that was there to guide me to through like what I need to be doing, like what a day-to-day -day should 
look like to really start and grow the business because you you're just kind of you're there they throw you out there and you're like here you go and you're like okay what do I do you know um but lessons wise I would say verbal just doesn't mean shit (laughs) verbal isn't anything and I learned that the hard way a couple of times that everything has to be in writing and Mm. learns that the very hard way and left with like a client that wasn't so (laughs) thrilled um but you know you live and you learn it happens especially when you're new you make mistakes and luckily it ended up working out because although that I did not get it in writing they had gone with another offer and then a couple days later guess who's calling me (laughs) and wanting to get it under contract and we ended up working it out and they ended up buying the house so it worked out um but it, it was a gut punch, you know, because like your clients, like they rely so heavily on you to like lead them, guide them. And you're trying to do your best. And you, when you think something's going to go one way and you realize like, oh my God, rookie move, not having anything in writing. Well, it, unfortunately, it does seem like some lessons have to be learned the hard way, yeah. but I'm glad it worked out yeah. for you and your client. Speaking of your yeah. clients, you offer like a, a new client meet and greet. Um, what do you discuss with, with people when they're sitting down with you for the first time? So we go over, I have a buyer's guide that we go over. I guess I should have had that here too. Um, that's kind of introducing, if they don't already know me, like it introduces me, what I offer, what the process really looks like. And we go over the contract. So when they do go to sign, an offer for the first time, they're not unfamiliar with it. We go through it step by step, what everything means, what they can expect, um, kind of like, you know, like the twists and turns that we might see along the way. So that I really try to limit the amount of surprises that are going to get thrown, especially because I work with a lot of first time home buyers. They, they don't know, you know, so they, really I want to make sure that they are very well educated and know what they're signing before they sign. I think that's great. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so we discuss that. We go over their needs and wants, decipher between the two, um, figure out what it is they're really, really looking for, and, and go from there. And we start the process. Wow. We're really getting to the good part. And I can't wait for you to hear what comes next. But first, I need you to do me a favor. I need you to make sure you are following and subscribe to the Closing Table podcast wherever it is you get your podcasts. Also, please leave us a comment or review. It is the best no-cost thing you can do for the podcast, and it helps us grow and find more awesome listeners like you. Now back to the episode. In regards to needs and wants, I think there was uh, one particular review or, or post I had seen where one of your clients said about you that you were so good at understanding their style. How do you do that? I'm very observant. <laughs> I pay attention. I listen to their words and what they're saying. And um, I mean, when you, I tell all my clients, like when you walk into a house, you know, like there is that gut feeling that you just, you just know. And I think we develop that skill over time too. And it's like what we look for, even if they're not like verbally acknowledging the house, we can, we can see it. Um, and it's just, it's really just about paying attention and observing and really, really listening to maybe even things that they're not even saying, um, and asking the questions. I will ask you a million and one questions until you're sick of me. (laughs) You know, I mean, not sick of me. Okay. But, you know, I ask a lot of questions to really narrow it down. I think that's really valuable, though, too, because people's style is is so unique. And I I like, you know, home decor and stuff like that. And I feel like my mom is always like, oh, you're so stylish. Like, help me. And I'm like, but my (laughs) block is like, I don't know. I I'm stylish with my style. You know, your thing is, is something else. And I think that's definitely a skill to be able to recognize what what strikes a chord with other people. Mm hmm. Yeah, definitely. And I mean, being able to like help clients to like envision their space, 
you know, because it's, it's very hard for people to go into someone else's home, especially if it's vacant. I mean, even if it's not vacant and they're still living there, just to like visualize your stuff in that space is, it's a very challenging thing to do. So being able to like put ideas and just like start talking out loud is super helpful. But I don't think I could ever decorate anyone else's house either. <laughs> I would I would struggle. I think, like, well, if you want me to like throw up me everywhere, I will happily do that. Right, right, right. If you like a Victorian kind of boho mesh, like I got you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Right. Well, like, like dark and moody. I'm like, I was just thinking that the other day. It's like I like my like TikTok Instagram is all like it's a lot of interior design and it's a lot of just real estate. And I'm like, I don't even think I fully understand my taste. Like, it's such a mix between, like, earthy and light and moody and dark. I feel like we're along the same line. <laughs> it's, a it's a mix. I'm like, okay, well. So how, um, when when clients come to you, going back to kind of the needs and wants, like, how do you help them decipher that? Because I think maybe a lot of people will think, needs or maybe I think I'm saying this right they will think something is a need when it's more of a want right and Mm -hmm. so kind of how do you walk them through the process of like maybe a home is perfect for them but it doesn't have that that one thing how do you how do you kind of help them reconcile that yeah so I explain like needs are your absolute non-negotiable so like especially the layout, things that are not easily changed, you have to be able, you have to love the layout. Is the layout going to work for you and your family? Is the location right? Um, is it close to like where you need it to be? In overall, does it have enough rooms, bathrooms? Like those are like your absolute needs. Like, do you need acreage or, you know, you can't make more land. So, and it's important that if, having an acre of land is a need for you like that you get that um the wants i would say is more so um like paint colors you know being able to like design it how you'd like like those are your your wants like you want that but it's not or like backsplash or certain appliances those are things that are easily changed where your needs are they're flat out non-negotiable not easily changed I think and then, that's... yeah, when we go through it, it's kind of like, what are you willing? Are you willing? Because, you know, some people have, like, that HGTV kind of taste, and you kind of have that, like, come to Jesus moment where, like, let's, we got to come bring it back down to earth, like, be a little real- realistic. Like, yes, we can probably check most of these boxes, but, like, what's something that we can kind of wiggle on? And I'm also a firm believer, too, like, just don't give up your search, like, I don't want you to settle either. That's the last thing I want you to do is settle on something that it could kind of work, but you're not in love with it. Like you, you have to own it. You know, it's your space. It's going to be your house. You you shouldn't have to settle. Yeah. It's a huge investment. Your clients obviously love you. You have over 25 five-star reviews. How do you how do you manage that level of success and client satisfaction? <laughs> well, we cry a lot. <laughs> I'm, just I'm kidding. Um, I don't know. Like, I think it's just really taking care of your people, and it's just genuinely caring about them and making sure that you're doing the absolute best for them, um, and always having their best interests in mind. Like that. That's it. That's number one. And I'm not afraid to tell you no. Um, and I have, in fact, like told a couple people like this, this isn't it, you know, um, not afraid to do that. So it's really just keeping my client top of mind and their interest here, taking care of them and making sure that they're good throughout the entire thing. And there's, there's really nothing else to it. It's about relationships. That's so great. Do you have any favorite client stories? (laughs) um I probably do I know that I do but thinking about it I'm like ooh, I should have made a list I don't know if I have like a favorite favorite story but I do 
I love when clients send me their like remodeling pictures and renovations. So there's a couple clients like a couple years later and like they're still texting me pictures of like what they're doing now and like what their house looks like. And it's it just makes you feel so good and warm and fuzzy. And yeah, I love that. That is really cool. That's like my favorite moment on yeah. like house hunters is like at the end after they've bought the house and like if they've done a remodel, I'm like, yes, give me more. Yes. Yep. I want to see everything. And I tell my clients at closing to I'm like, this isn't the end of it. Like, I want you to keep me updated. Like, I give everyone, like, a a checklist of things, like, you know, reminders, like, make sure you, like, change your address on your license, register to vote, things of that nature, just little things that can sometimes just, you're not thinking about. Um, and at the very bottom, I, like, I put, like, don't forget to send Adriana pictures, like, updates. I want to know what's going on. And they do. That's so cool because I'm sure they want to share with somebody, you know, and maybe they're yeah. afraid like, oh, their family is like, they're sick of me. But it's so great that you, you are building that long lasting relationship. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, it's really nice. Is there anything about this career that has surprised you? <laughs> Everything. <laughs> In short, quite literally everything. Um, I don't think I really had, like, an expectation of when I first, like, got into the business or had any idea what it would be like. I knew what, like, HGTV was like, and that was was the extent of my knowledge. I had no clue, and there's so many different avenues and twists and turns and rules and regulations, and it's, it's something new with every deal, and I think that's big reason why I love it so much is because not any deal is the same. There's not a single transaction that I've had that goes the exact same way. So I think (laughs) there's just, there's so many things. There are so many things. I think like the most surprising thing to me, and I'm new to this septic systems. I feel like the queen of septics. (laughs) And it's all because there's Donna Matt. She works at the Century 21 Signature in Flushing. And she's taught me so much about that because we had a situation where the septic field was completely shot. The septic tank itself was completely shot when it had to be completely redone. And there's just so much that goes into it that I don't think people really realize you know, but it's fun. It keeps you on your toes and you're always learning something new. And then you can help someone later down the road. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm sure every, yeah, everything is just another like checked box. Like now I'm yeah. a low key septic builds expert. builds and builds and builds. Like your knowledge is constantly growing. What is something you would tell your best friend about real estate? Um, (laughs) what would I tell my best friend about real estate? It's just like as a whole or like, sure. Or maybe if they came to you and and wanted to buy a house. Um, I would say, okay, let's go. Like, I've been waiting for you. (laughs) You Um, obviously I would like, feel like I would tell them anything that I just, I tell my clients, honestly. I mean, they're going to see more of me and there are some clients I'm a little bit more serious with. And I think it would just be so fun. It would be, I don't think I would tell them anything different than I already tell my clients. I don't think that process would change. Um, it would just be more so like, get ready to have fun and see me all the time. You know, <laughs> I'm a big, I'm a big phone call person too. So I'm like, I mean, most of my friends are not phone call people. Mm. Um, so that would probably be something I would warn them. <laughs> Get ready for a lot of phone calls from me. I think that's great. It's such a direct line of communication. Yeah. And just like hearing someone's voice. Like, I just, I love it. I love it. And I can like, I can read it better. You know? Definitely. Sex can be misinterpreted all the time. And I'm the person, I'll be overly enthusiastic. I'm like, okay, you gotta... You, you have to delete a couple of bit. exclamation points every yeah. time. You- <laughs> or like, LOL after everything. Yeah. <laughs> you know, because, yeah. yeah. 
It's more personal. Like for calls. sure. What are some things you're looking forward to this year, either personally or professionally? Um, personally, I have, I don't even know if I can talk about it right now because I don't want to jinx it, but I have an upcoming listing that is a first for me, um, price point wise and the style. It's a super, super unique home. Um, and I'm stoked. I'm so excited about it. And it's, it's, ah, I don't even know if I can really like talk about it because I don't want to jinx anything. Um, but it will be coming in like the next month or so. And I have never been so excited for a listing. It's one where like I emailed Zillow gone wild and I'm like, Hey, what about this? <laughs> like, what do you think? Oh, it's super, that's super cool. It was built in the 1800s. I kept the original floors and it's just like, it was like one of those, uh, it was one of those things where like you walk in and you stand on the floor and you're just like taken back. Cause you're like, I'm standing on nearly two century year old floors. And that's just, just a lot. It was a lot. I'm like, I'm going to need a second to like breathe through this and like process the floors that I'm standing on. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm like, yeah, hey, give me a second, but. Yeah, I'm excited for that. And just on personal growth in general, I'm big on personal development anyways. Um, so I think every year is exciting and you never know what the heck it's going to hold or the people that are going to come in and out of your life. And just overall as a whole, I'm excited. Oh, that's so cool. I'm really excited about your listing. We'll have to keep an eye on Me your too. your socials yeah. to see when it, keep your eyes when it shows up. Yeah. Um, and... I love what you said about personal growth. You're a yoga instructor, yeah? Yeah. I just saw it this morning, actually. Yeah. Oh, nice. Thursday mornings I teach. Um, Tuesday afternoons, Thursday mornings. Do you find mm -hmm. that, 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 that kind of, you know, kind of yoga mindset, like, helps you through the ups and downs of real estate? Absolutely. 100%. Especially, like, the stresses. Like, it's not – like, this – career is not for the faint of heart. Like it is stressful and it can be a lot of pressure. So I think yoga and just focusing, honestly, just like being mindful and focusing on your breathing has helped me. I can't even tell you how many times, so many times. So just like come back to the breath and to just relax, you know, and try to like relax your mind and I can give thanks to yoga for a lot of things. <laughs> That's so cool. And I'm, it's yeah. so cool that you're, you're teaching and I'm sure, you know, somebody at your studio is going to need to buy or sell a home at some point. So it's yeah. another great way to meet yeah. people kind of organically. It is, it is really good. Uh, I just had to talk with him one today. She had no idea I was a real estate agent and I, I do try because I don't try to like shove it or like throw it in their face. Like, Hey, you're coming to yoga to like relax and you know, mm -hmm. but if it comes up, like we will talk about it. Um, but I just had another connection today and they do estate sales and things like that. And I had no idea. And I see them literally on a weekly basis for the last so many months. And just like those, like, you never know, you never know where business is going to come from. Right. You never, never know. And I think that's like important to know is like the, you know, bringing it up without being too like salesy. I think mm -hmm. it, it helps build that relationship too. Yeah, definitely. I'm definitely not going around. <laughs> I'm sure the owner would not appreciate it very much. But I was going around with like my business card. I'm like, hey, <laughs> right. <laughs> considering listing or selling or listing or looking, you know, I don't. We haven't gotten an opportunity to talk about much about the the area that you are operating in. What is what is something you love about working with clients in your area? Um, well, this area is home. So Flushing, a lot of my businesses is in Flushing, Genesee County area. Um, so honestly, it's just fun, especially in like your hometown. It's just fun because like you don't like oh like I used to do this here or like you know you see the progress and how the community has been built up um, and things that have changed. And it's just, it's just cool. And it's such a, if you've never been to Flushing, I'm not sure where, where are you from? 
Um, I'm more in the Metro Detroit area. Our okay. our window still is based out of Eaton Rapids. I feel like yeah. I've been through Flushing. I don't know. <laughs> it's a you probably if unless you're like you're driving north, you maybe you pass through. Mm-hmm. But everyone will tell you it's. I mean, maybe everyone. I know everyone in my office. I'm out of Grand Blanc, which is like 25 minutes south of me. Um, flushing so far away. <laughs> I, mean, I guess it really just depends. Like, there's no easy way to get to Flushing. It's a common thing. I don't agree, but I've also have lived here the majority of my life. Um, and it's just like, it's one of those just small, homey towns. It just feels like home. Um, even if you're just like an outside coming in, it's like one of those towns, especially in the winter, if it snows, it's like a Hallmark movie, you know, it's a a very small, um, and it's cute and it's just, it's just home and it's a good place for my daughter to grow up. So. Well, now I have to come visit Flushing because I love it. I mean, I'm going to take you like a couple of things, you know, I mean, there's not so much to do here, but it is, it's home. It's very homey. And if you're um, different, like, little trails, they have really nice walking trails and parks and really great ice cream places. <laughs> well, and I think, like, the thing that I love when I talk to an agent who's selling in their hometown is that they are so invested. And, like, you are so invested in the area because it's always been home. It's not just the now home. It's been your forever home. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's been, it's been something. So like I didn't, I left for a few years and I didn't buy this house. So I ended up buying my childhood home. Oh. And now I'm going to be, when I do go to South, I do plan that moving in the next like couple of years and going further South. Um, I will probably be my own worst client because there's so much emotional attachment to the house. Um, but I did, I lived in, when my daughter was first born, we were living in Westland for a little while. Um, and then I ended up moving back home, buying this house. And it's just fun watching her grow up and like play on like the same sidewalks that like I was doing or like, you know, like or walk, we, when we go walk around the block, like I would walk to my friend's house and like, she now knows like their houses and it's just, it's cute to just share those memories with her and create new ones at the same time. Oh, that is just so precious. Mm. Oh, I love that for you. Mm. Well, Adriana, would you like to uh, direct people how they can find you, how they can work with you? Yeah, so on Instagram, Facebook, both of them, it's just Adriana Vasquez, dot realtor. Um, and you can always call me. I love phone calls. If you want to call me, you can call me at 810-391-9233. Awesome. And we will link your socials in the show notes. Thank you so much, Adriana, for being here with me today. Uh, It was lovely to get to know you. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for having me. Of course. And thank you all for watching. This has been The Closing Table brought to you by Windows Still. I'm Kat Schooler. If you're enjoying this Mm -hmm. podcast, please make sure you follow us on Apple and Spotify. And if you're part of our YouTube audience, make sure you like and subscribe. It helps us find more amazing listeners like you. We will see you all next time. Bye. (laughs) Thanks.